Here in Pennsylvania, we have megatons of water in streams, lakes, and wetlands. By the State Water Plan Atlas, Pennsylvania has over 86,000 miles of streams, 4,000 lakes, and over 400,000 acres of wetlands. Lots of water. Some might say we're water rich. And sometimes we seem to have too much water. With all this surface water that you can see across the state, you might be surprised to know that Pennsylvania has much more fresh groundwater than surface water more than 30 times the amount. In fact, almost all the world's unfrozen fresh water exists under the ground. And groundwater is sometimes referred to as the hidden resource, rightly so. The USGS hydrologist said that the science of hydrology would be relatively simple if we were unable, if we were unable to penetrate below the Earth's surface. But groundwater has often been portrayed as difficult to understand. Just a hundred years ago, the Texas Supreme Court ruled that groundwater was mysterious and occult. Even today, there's many myths about groundwater. It's not different. It's just underground. It has to follow the same physics, laws of physics that surface water does. And it's a key part of the water cycle. The water cycle is the continuous movement of water from one location and form to another, above, on, and below the surface of the earth. If you start with precipitation, water can follow multiple paths. Evaporation sends water back into the air. Rain or snow coat the land surface, where in the growing season, thirsty plants intercept it and then transpire it, some of it, back into the atmosphere. Runoff water collects in trickling streams and rivulets and flows to streams, rivers, lakes, and oceans. Water infiltrates the surface of the earth to become groundwater, which flows much more slowly and typically heads for nearby streams, discharge zones. Water may be constantly in motion, but the exchanges don't occur at a steady rate. At times, some processes of the cycle accelerate, while others slow or come to a stop. Water may be caught up deep in groundwater flow for thousands of years, or rainfall may evaporate before it reaches the ground. Other processes, like storms, quickly shift from one place to another. Specific vents can be remarkable, often difficult to measure, and seemingly unpredictable, but today we can understand the main parts of the water cycle. Even in drought conditions, this stream continues to flow. It may not rain any substantial amount in a few weeks, yet there's still water within the banks. How does that happen? Where is the water coming from? We've looked at the maps, there's not any huge lake upstream. Yet, you might have guessed it, it's groundwater. This stream is fed by groundwater, and in fact, nearly every stream in Pennsylvania is fed by groundwater. You might be surprised to know that about 65% of a stream is groundwater. It's called base flow. It's where groundwater seeps in from below and sustains the stream even in times of drought. This is the primary reason why groundwater and surface water should be considered as one resource. About half of precipitation evaporates or transpires through vegetation back into the atmosphere. Some precipitation runs off into streams and rivers and we see stream levels rise. Normally about a third of precipitation seeps into the ground as groundwater recharge. But here's something to think about. What happens when we pave over forested areas, farmland, or even grassland? Instead of soaking into the ground to become groundwater, this water races to the nearest gutter, then flows out to streams and rivers. It quickly adds volume to the stream. In urban areas, where so much of the surface is paved over, you can see these flashy streams that rise quickly and fall quickly. So you short circuit the water cycle this way. Groundwater is lost, and you become more susceptible to floods. When groundwater goes into groundwater storage, it doesn't just sit there. Groundwater is flowing at a much slower rate than surface water, but it is always moving from recharge to discharge. It flows under the hydraulic gradient, from high pressure to low pressure. If you talk about water in terms of its exchange rate, or how long it takes to replace water in a particular setting, Water in the atmosphere stays there about 10 days. For water in a river, it's about 11 days. Soil moisture might take a year to be exchanged. A large lake could take seven years. But groundwater exchange rate 
is on the order of hundreds of years. In Pennsylvania, most groundwater flow is local, flowing from nearby topographic highs to discharge at nearby streams and rivers. Because of some geological differences, you may get groundwater discharge at large springs. At boiling springs, groundwater comes to the surface in the form of these forceful springs. It's partly because of the large fractures in the limestone, and partly because of a rock called diabase, which forms a subsurface dam to the north and east of here. Over 15 million gallons of water a day comes to the surface at boiling springs. These springs are evidence of the huge amount of groundwater in the area. As groundwater moves northward off of South Mountain, it becomes constricted from the walls of the diabase and it's funneled upward as large springs with unusual force, driven by gravity from the mountain's elevation. The churning action of the two main springs can be seen where groundwater merges into the small lake as bubbling springs. Here at the Susquehanna River, a mind-boggling amount of water flows past Harrisburg all the time, 24-7. The, the average flow at Harrisburg is about 10,000 cubic feet per second. That's about four and a half million gallons in a minute, or six billion gallons in a day. But when you think about it and calculate it out, over Pennsylvania in an average year of 43 inches of precipitation, about 34 trillion gallons of water would fall on Pennsylvania in one year. It's been estimated, though, that there's 80 trillion gallons of fresh groundwater. If you would pump out all the fresh groundwater, it would cover the entire state by over eight feet. Groundwater is a great resource, but recognizing its part in the water cycle is important. Groundwater as base flow to streams and rivers is a critical part of the water cycle, and care should be taken to evaluate our usage of groundwater and its effects on the water cycle. In addition, we have to be extra careful to protect its quality. Once groundwater becomes contaminated, it's very difficult and expensive to clean up. So please do your part to protect and conserve this great hidden treasure, groundwater.